Hey everybody, Mike Wrench, Mike here. We are back today with what we're calling a walk around video. Yep, we're not going to Copart, we're not going to IAA. We're gonna take a little stroll around Monkey Wrench Mike Manor. Yeah, M-W-M-H-Q. Okay, let's do it, ASAP. Yeah, you thought I was going to talk about this car, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we are. We're going to talk about Janus, the 1969 Mercedes 280 SE, which is haunted, and I'm going to tell you why there's a Bible <laughs> on top of the car. There's literally a Bible on top of the car, and there's a good reason for that. But I also want to talk about a couple of other cars that I brought back into the operating part of Mike Monkey Wrench Mike's HQ. Yep, we're going to tell you why the 560 SEC is back here and the mighty S63 AMG. This is where the heavy duty work is done on my cars. Up front, I call it triage in the front garage. That's where little bitty things get done. But when cars come back to the back, it's pretty serious. Let's jump in. And behold, the mighty 560 SEC and Lola showing off. How you doing, pretty girl? I gave her a little haircut. You can see your eyes now. She looks beautiful. Doesn't she? Yes, she does. Okay, so the 560 SEC is back here where things are serious. Well, one, of course, what's going on? The battery was dead. Always, every single battery on every single Mercedes, if I leave them sitting for, well, two or three months, <laughs> they are always dead. Well, I brought the car back here because this car doesn't go. I went ahead and I purchased a radio and I thought, of course, I can make it all the way to Best Buy over across the city of Tulsa and things will be fine. Well, they were until I got to a little bitty hill and the car would not go up the hill. It was so bogged down, by the way, look at the radio. Isn't that gorgeous? Yep, it's like the one I had in the SEL. So I kind of know how to work it. It's great. I just wish everything around it was great as well. What I think is wrong with this car, it runs fine, and when things seem to get warmed up, I can't go. And I had the I had it floored. I literally had this thing floored, and she wouldn't go. I it took me, what was it, ten minutes, ten or fifteen minutes to get through an intersection. I had to stop the car, restart it, rev it, put it in drive, and I'd go about five feet. Then it wouldn't go anymore, and I had to have to stop the car, do it again and again and again and again. They're new fuel pumps. When I first got the car, I got the good fuel pumps and the fuel filter. I've changed so much about it. I just, it has to be a clogged cat. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. So we're gonna take the cat apart and take a look at it. Take a look at that mess right there. You're a hot mess. You are. Thank you. Okay, so the 560 SCC, we're getting worked on. And I gotta tell you, I am loving the car. I am horrified of the paint. Look at this. When I bought the car, it was okay. And then whoever painted it, look at this. The clear coat is coming off in huge chunks and I can't make it stop. So the car is gonna to have to go in for a paint job. These things are worth a lot. They're very, very rare. And the inside is in really, really, really good condition. So it deserves a paint job once I'm able to drive her. And this looks so much worse on camera than it does in person. But I have some dye to re-dye this part of the seat right there. Love the sound of that. Now let's focus our attention on the S63 AMG. This right here is one of my favorite places to be. Take a look at this. Yeah, I love the interior of these. I love the way it drives. I love the power. And you can really tell that this car, I think was 130 something thousand dollars new. All right, love, love, love the S63 AMG, except we have a problem, Houston. Okay, where's my hood release? There you go. You think I would know as many times I've had the hood open. No, I actually haven't had the hood open so much on this car because it's been so good. But she is back here in OR because of something that lies very, very deep inside of there. The engine is great, no problems at all. My problem is tied to this right here. 
and is tied to this right here. These are the AC ports. High pressure, low pressure, the condenser is buried way back in here and it's gone out. This car needs a new air conditioning condenser and or compressor. I'm sorry, what am I talking about? Yeah, a compressor. Condenser's up here, Mike. Come on, compressor. Yeah, it lies way, way, way down in there. And to get to it, you literally have to jack up the car, remove the under panels. You then have to drain the oil. I'm going by the service manual here. Drain the oil, lift the engine, remove lots of these little parts right here, move a tube, an oil tube, to get the uh, air conditioning compressor out. Yay. So how much fun is that going to be? That's why this car is kind of stalled right now. This car, love you, but you're literally driving me crazy. You recognize this. This has been the reason I have not put out any videos. I've spent so many hours with this car. When I walk away, the last thing I want to do is make a video about a car. Yeah. It, it is. It is absolutely 100% haunted. Look at the face right there. Look at the face. I have been in this car, over this car, underneath this car, doing all kinds of crazy things to get it started. You see what's missing? I haven't even released the video. I'm taking this out yet, so that's coming. But I had to take out the entire fuel injection pump. Why? Well, it wasn't feeding anything. And look at it. Look at it sitting right here. <laughs> I love it. It's a neat little engine. It's an engine within an engine, except it's driving me crazy. So we're still working on this. Basically, I am getting good flow from two, three, four, five, six. One seems to kind of stick. When you turn this, there's a point. I don't want to knock this over, but when you turn this, there's a point where it gets a little bit difficult to move. Okay, let me see if I can do this. I'm sorry about the camera work. See right there. Right there, it's a little bit. But if I keep moving it, see how they all move in and out? Okay, so we do have movement, but just at the top. When number one reaches the top, it gets a little bit hard to turn, and the camshaft, see how it kind of sticks? It sticks, but if I move it, it'll release. So let's do this, watch. And it pops right out, see how it popped? Yeah. So that's what you want. You want it to be able to do this the whole time. So I've been running all kinds of new fluids, old fluids, very old school fluids on this car to try to clean it out. And I'm going to have a video on this coming out very, very soon. Now let's talk about why the Holy Bible is sitting on top of the car. <laughs> yep, here it is. The Bible has been sitting on top of this car <laughs> hoping to bring some good Okay, if you know this car, you know the story, and I kind of laugh about it, but it is kind of terrifying. All right, now, you just, just sit right there. Don't do anything yet. Let me get you a little pad. Okay, this car was owned by a guy in Clinton, Oklahoma, who passed away, and it went to his daughter, who passed away, so it went to her husband, who didn't want to die, and he sold it to me. Literally 500 bucks. I don't know why everybody is dying that uh, owns this car. I haven't died yet, at least I don't think I have, but I've had the car for, I want to say, about two years, and now that I'm finally getting into it, there is something about this car that is just really kind of creepy, and I, I'm not a cusser. I really don't cuss a lot unless I'm under this car, and then something gets a hold of me and drives me crazy, so I thought I'd bring a little good into this situation. This is a Bible we've had for a long, long, long time, and I don't know religious views or whatever, but I have a passage marked right here. This is when, when Jesus cast out a demon. Listen, buddy, all right? It's time for you to go. So anyway, let's read this very, very quickly. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we done? What this, okay, this is, it's hard to read. This isn't King James Version, but this is very, very, okay, anyway, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And here we go. And Jesus 
rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Come out of my car. All right, come on. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed. Boom. I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to leave it open. All right. All of the goodness, go in there and you just be gone. All right. I can't. I was going to hire an exorcist, an exorcist, an exorcist. Yeah. Anyway, if I clean this, no, it won't go. I don't like it. So we're going to paint it. Look at that. Ugh. Yeah. It looks so much weirder in person that I just can't take it. Oh, now it looks even more ghostly. Ah, oh, crap, what have I done? Dag nabbit, okay. Well, anyway, work continues on this crazy car. We've got <laughs> the Lord intervening and helping us with this thing. And please, please, come back to life, car. Janice, I love you. I want you to come back to life. We're gonna leave this like this and magic is gonna happen, okay? So let's do that. Anyway, that's your update on Janice, the haunted car. All right, we do have some good news. This is triage. This is the front of the house, okay? When a car is kind of sick, I bring him in here. Millie is fine. Don't worry about Millie, but you notice there's nobody next to her, okay? Nobody is next to the car, which means all the other cars out front are in pretty good condition if they are staying with me for a while, all right? This is Millie, the 1975 MG Midget that was my dad's. This car, <clears throat> love, love, love this car. In fact, I took it to uh, a restaurant here because a subscriber wanted to meet me. Yeah, John drove all the way up from Dallas, and so I went and had lunch with uh, he and his wife. Had a great time, and he got to take Millie for a little spin. Take a look at this footage. All right, John, what's happening? What are you doing? Uh, you do realize what do you know? that car is filthy? Monkey wrench, Mike sticker. Of course, and spare stickers just in case. The car's never looked better, has it? And never <laughs> has. Now it's got the right touch, guys. There we go. Love there it. There we go. Yay! Yay. Every time I get gas, somebody comes up and, and talks about the car. Yeah, I know. Occasionally, we've got the snow horses. What do you think? Sweet. <laughs> Told you I knew how to drive a stick. Yeah. I really haven't done much videos with Millie. I need to do more. Because, but she's perfect. She's perfect in everything she does. That's what it sounds like when you open the hood. No, Millie needs fluids. And so what we're gonna do is eventually give her some new oil, some new antifreeze, uh, maybe some brake fluid, and she is gonna be loving it. But I just thought I'd show you the engine. There you go. That little thing right there powers this giant car. No, it's a teeny tiny car. Teeny tiny, I love it. This is the first car that I really kind of rebuilt myself. And yes, this is literally a paint tray that I used to keep the heat from the, from the exhaust off of the carburetor right here. And it works, it works great. Okay, this car I would literally drive anywhere if I brought an extra fuel pump with me. Cause they last about a year and the one that's on there is almost two years old. So she'll need a new heart sometime soon. But that is Millie. You know what this is, yep. This is Oprah slash Medea that caused quite a stir when I gave her the name. Yep, this is the 19, <laughs> 2008 Mercedes GL450. I used to haul everything back and forth. We're having an issue with the radio. This is kind of typical of these cars. It works when it wants to. Let's see if it's going to work for us now. Yeah, one key, put it in. Sounds like Mike's going to need another battery. Yay, Mike. Okay, so, do we have sound? No, there's no sound. 
Okay, on the batteries, on the, one, the W164 and the 163, the ML and the GL, after a while, they just quit working. And the, they, they play when they want to. Everything looks fine, but there's no sound coming out of the speakers. And I'll be driving down the road, and all of a sudden, wow, it comes on so loud. It's a problem with the radio, and according to Mercedes, you have to replace the radio. But I am now working with a radio manufacturer. I just sent them the dimensions and everything, and they're going to send me a new radio with a uh, fancy screen and all this kind of stuff. So there is some good news, and we're going to install this radio and give it a complete review very, very soon. Because i got to have my tune. This is my favorite car. Yeah, i got to tell you, I can't explain how much I love driving this car. 1997 S500. This is a big one. This is a big problem that another car just kind of peed all over my driveway. I'll talk about that. You can probably guess what one that is coming up. But this car I love. It does have a couple of paint issues, but she drives like she is brand new. I just drove to Missouri and back. Uh, about seven hours of driving total. And she did fine. She did fine. I'm not a big fan of all these wires. And the only thing I think is weird is when you're trying to power up your iPod or your iPhone or whatever you have, the shifter hits this. Then it's just a problem. Um, I don't know why. I'm thinking about actually drilling a hole right here and putting in a charging port, which would be cool. Then I could leave this thing unplugged because this looks so much better than what you just saw. Yeah, get rid of the wires, Mike. But this car, 23 miles to gallon highway, and she will cruise fast, 80, 90, 100, whatever I ask of her. This, the W140 chassis, I tell you what, they say they spent a billion dollars developing these cars, and I believe it, because they just work so well. Heavy, powerful, quiet, stately, magnificent. Love this car. Hate this car. Yes, I hate this car. Yep, this is the 2001 Mercedes S600. She is the reason there's a huge spot on my driveway over there that I just showed you. She is peeing everywhere, all right? She's kind of fun. Oh, that's the reason I hate her. Look at that. Look at that. That's not my camera. That's the actual dashboard. Maybe I need to bring a Bible over here too. Maybe this car <laughs> is haunted. Holy moly. And I guarantee you, watch what's going to happen, okay? It won't start. See? Nothing. I literally charged the battery two days ago, connected it, and it's dead again. See? Nothing. Nothing at all. I was actually going to move this car so I could take out one of my other favorite cars. Kind of. But this car is crazy and mean. She drives great when she wants to. Problem is she rarely wants to. Yep, that V12 engine, super smooth, even more powerful than the S500, which she should be. She's got four extra cylinders, but she doesn't always want to work. Okay, I'm kind of mediocre about this car. Same body style, same year, same everything. Okay, S600. S55 AMG. I've already done the comparison video on the two, so if you want to check that out. It's pretty cool. They're not what they used to be, but they're not, well, one of them isn't trash. The other one is, and you know which one to switch. Okay, this is a nice place to be. I really enjoy this car, and she drives fine. Her battery stays charged as opposed to the S600, and I love the smell. I don't know what's in here, but it really, really, really smells good. Um, as far as issues, none. None at all, except for that. An SRS, which according to the uh, scanner, goes back to the airbag in the door. I may need to clean the uh, where the contact point is, where it plugs in to the actual airbag, and that should take care of that. But everything is fine. Everything is really, really good. All right, there you go. That is a walk around for Monkey Wrench Mike at uh, Casa de Moulet, House of Mullet. That's what I used to call this place. Triage in the front, the OR is in the back. As far as what's going to happen with these cars, well, some are keepers and some are goers. That's a goer. Yeah, she's a grower. She's a goer.
not a grower. I don't like that reference. Anyway, she is going away, which, you know, I've had several people contact me about the S600 and I gave them a price and then I don't hear, ever hear from them again. And the price isn't that high. I, I think I said like $3,000 for it, um, which is about what I have into the thing. But it does need the power steering rack replaced. Or if you can fix the leak, then you'll be fine with it because that's the fluid that dripped all over my driveway on the other side right there. Power steering fluid just bleh. She just kind of peed everywhere. Okay, so that car's going. The S55, this one I believe is gonna go. I may put this up on Facebook Marketplace and see if anybody locally wants her and then if not, we'll send her to auction as well. S600 is gonna go to the auction because I don't wanna mess with that. Randy's gonna help me with that. So Randy, thank you very much. I appreciate your help with that. S55, if you're interested, Here's an email address, monkeywrenchmike123 at gmail.com. This car will go anywhere, um, but it does have that ABC system, which is kind of iffy sometimes, but low mileage, uh, good engine, uh, the spring's replaced. <laughs> Remember those videos? Yep, tires are good, she drives good, radio air conditioning is really cold, radio is really loud, and so this might be a good car for somebody. So let me know if you want this car. The uh, S500, definitely a keeper. The GL, she's a keeper for a while. The 560 SEC, I'm probably going to keep that one until I get her painted and get some new uh, wheels put on her. And the S63 AMG, that's the big question mark right now. Do I keep it? Do I sell it? And then maybe pray that Randy still has that uh, Panamera by Porsche? I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. And as for Janice, I don't know. I, I need help. Can you help me, please? Yeah, the Bible's still there on the engine. All right, we need the demons out, and we need the good stuff in there. We're going to see what happens with Janice. Who knows? All right, folks, just a quick little update video. Um, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to put something else out. It was really fun having my sister and Lori here last weekend for our live. That was really cool, but I've been spending so much time fixing, trying to decipher and decide what is wrong with Janice. That's where all my time goes. And then I don't want to work on other cars. I get so mad. But I think I'm getting close. We'll see what happens when we put that uh, fuel injection pump, the fuel injection pump back on. We'll see what happens. Okay. Thank you for liking. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm inching ever so closely to 30,000 subs. And I think that would be a very momentous day when that happens. All right, folks, we have all kinds of uh, stickers. You can uh, send me an email. You can cash at Ben's Guy 99 cost three bucks. I'll send those out. I probably just sent out 60. Mike opened his mouth during the live and said, if you send me a, an email, I'll send you a free sticker. I have stickers going out all over the world, probably 60, maybe even 70 of those things. Time to charge. Okay. So if you can send me three bucks, I'll send you a sticker. Include your address. All right. When you do the cash app thing, if you don't have cash app, whatever, I'll work with you. Send me an email and I've already given you that address. Also, I have all kinds of Monkey Wrench Mike merchandise that is below the video right here. So please check that out. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.